For those of you who don't know me, my name is Leanne Vogel. I'm a holistic nutritionist and high fat enthusiast behind the site healthfulpursuit.com and I help women regulate their hormones and balance their metabolisms and generally be awesome by eating more fat. And today we are celebrating the launch of my ketogenic audiobooks available at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash audio and we are talking about killing the cravings. So I'm going to be sharing a couple of ideas with you and then if you have any questions, hold them till the very end of the Periscope and then we'll leave a space for a little bit of Q&A. Uh, for those of you who have joined me live on Periscope right now, do you like the little dagger and the little crossbones that I added to the Periscope? Awesome. <laughs> uh, I was hoping that the hearts would turn into like little skulls, but it's not happening. Um, okay. Cravings. <laughs> yes. Murder them. Love it. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much. So, um, how much, okay. I was just reading my notes. How much of your cravings is because of your strict food rules? And I can't answer this question for you, but, oops, I'm just gonna, there we go, block all the people, <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry about that guys. Um, how much of your cravings are because of your strict food rules? Probably a bunch, yeah probably a whole bunch more than maybe you think is happening. So, wow, geez, I don't know. We're just gonna spend some time. Okay, I'm gonna ignore the comments for a while, guys, and then we'll pick up um, in a bit here. Okay, awesome. So how much of your cravings are because of your strict food rules? And this is something that I really struggled with for quite a long time. Uh, when I was vegan, vegetarian, paleo, all of the things. And it wasn't until about, to be honest, September was a big, like last September was a big um, transitionary period for me. Uh, and what really changed is that I opened up the gates to have everything. Everything was on the table. I went to a um, food store where they sell a bunch of... Jeez, I'm sorry for the profanity, guys. <laughs> uh, I went to a bulk candy store. I bought a ton of candy. I filled up a bag, like a grocery bag of candy, and put it in my closet, like in my pa pantry rather, and I let it sit there and every time I walked past it, I said, Leanne, you can have this candy. Do you want this candy? And there was this message in my head saying, you can totally have this. It's totally fine. And um, that really opened up my perception. It's all about perception. So my major, major, major thing and something that was a really, really big learning lesson for me was that a lot of my cravings come because I feel restricted in the eating style that I'm in right now. And this, this isn't to say you can't follow an eating style. This isn't to say that ketogenic eating isn't going to work for you or you're going to be um, setting yourself up for failure. But oftentimes when we say we are going to start the ketogenic thing on Monday, so on Saturday and Sunday we eat everything and what do I mean by cravings? Just food cravings. So wanting to have chocolates and candies or potato chips or whatever that thing is for you. And it's probably the things that you feel like you can't have because of the diet that you're on. And when we go, you know, Saturday and Sunday, we're like, we're going to eat all the things because Monday is a new diet. It sets this tone in your head of starvation mode is coming, starvation mode is coming. And we go maybe three to five days on this new diet and then our body's like, oh my gosh, starvation mode, I can't not function, I need all the food. When really, it's all in your brain. Your brain is sending that signal saying that there's not enough food. And so, yeah, definitely carb ups, we're gonna talk about that. Um, my suggestion to you is be really honest with yourself. Maybe set aside a little bit of time this weekend and ask yourself how much of your cravings is because of your strict 
food rules. And what practice can you do? Maybe all of the foods that you crave, maybe you keep them in your pantry. Um, there's actually a study, I can't remember where I, re where I read it, but uh, a bunch of parents gave their kids all of the foods that they love, like the M&Ms and the Kit Kats and all the treats, and they kept giving it to the kids. Like, it was always available, like tons of it, so much of it. And after a couple of weeks, the kids couldn't eat anymore. And the pillowcases were filled with all, all of the things, eat all of the things, exactly. And they didn't want it anymore. And that was really my practice in September when I read that. I was like, okay, I'm going to fill up a bag with all of the candy that I'm always craving. And every time I walk by it in the, cap, in the pantry, I'm going to say, do you want this? And to be honest, every time that I ate it, I felt like crap. And then it became, well, I can have this and it's totally there for me. I just choose not to do it because it doesn't make me feel good. And something that I'm noticing in the comments too is that good versus bad behavior. So I was speaking with a client last week and she said, well, when I'm good, things are good, but when I'm bad, things are bad. And that again, that's a perception thing. And for myself, that good versus bad behavior, I don't know about you, but when I've been bad, it's sort of like all bets are off. I'm just going to eat all everything that I can because why not? I, I ate the bad thing, so I'm just going to continue being bad. Yes, it's that extremist mentality. And, and if you look at the rest of your life, so take a minute over the weekend, ask yourself how much of your craving is because of strict food rules, and then ask yourself how that all or nothing mentality is working for you. Because it's not just with your food. It's probably with your relationships, with your friends, um, with everything. With your work, uh, the definition of insanity, definitely. Um, with, oh, thank you. Um, with all of your relationships, with food, with people, with activities, with working out, it's this all or nothing mentality. And how is that serving you? So one of your homework assignments this week is create a piece of paper. I'm a big writer. So a piece of paper, two columns, the belief, this all or nothing belief. Okay. So the all or nothing belief, like I have to go to the gym six days a week. Otherwise I'm bad. It's off. There's no point. And then the truth so if I go to the gym once a week, I feel really good. That one time that I went, I feel great. So that all or nothing mentality really pulls in our cravings. I'm telling you, like that all or nothing, black or white, no gray is always going to pull us into the cravings and feeling bad about ourselves. And so I wanted to bring up that specific topic and um, you're helping me be less. Fanatical. Yes. Also, how much do you crave sweets or sweetness? Um, you know what? Uh, when I crave sweet things, I love fruit. I love, love fruit. Um, oranges, apples. I don't do bananas, but um, berries. And when we transition from, you know, I came from a McDonald's loving place. I went to McDonald's every day, and this wasn't so long ago, actually. Uh, I would say like 10 years ago, I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, going through a 12-pack of Diet Coke, and eating uh, two double cheeseburgers from McDonald's. That was like my lunch, and sometimes dinner as well. I'd go twice. So to transition from that to eating how I eat now, it was a huge, huge transition. Huge. Yes. Yes way. That was definitely a thing. And Fruitopia, I drank like a big, like bigger than my face. I used to joke, like take pictures of it. And this was like the sugary fruit drink disgustingness. Um, and <laughs> you're lucky you didn't have a stroke. Yeah. So cravings are real when it comes to the blood sugar highs and lows. And that's why I feel like the combination of eating fat, which is something that doesn't spike your blood sugar, right? Because your blood sugar is going to maintain steadiness when you eat fat. So when we're eating that fat, plus we're looking at our emotional connection to food, 
we're coming at it from a double whammy. We don't have those blood sugar highs and lows. We understand when we're craving something because of all the sugar that we're eating or we understand when we're craving things because of our emotions. We talk a lot about this actually on the podcast, the No Sugar Coating Podcast. And this is a podcast that I host with Amber and I And a combination of eating fats by maintaining that blood sugar as well as looking at our cravings and enjoying um, being inquisitive can be the the double whammy. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. It's so awesome. Um, Some guidance that I have for you is eat when you're hungry. So that's a really big one. Uh, Oftentimes cravings come up when we feel restricted and we feel restricted when maybe we're intermittent fasting um, and we're actually hungry but we don't allow ourselves to eat and then it becomes the whole rigmarole. Um, Enjoy fats. So we talked about the satiation of fats, the blood sugar highs and lows and why eating fat limits cravings because of those blood sugar highs and lows. And enjoy carb ups. So if you guys have questions about carb ups, I did a Periscope a couple of days ago about carb ups. You can find that on my YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube and search for Healthful Pursuit, they're all there. And you can go to, uh, I think it's uh, Healthful Pursuit. No, that's not it. And Heart It Up. You can even go to heartitup.com and that will take you to all of my previous Periscopes. And your next homework assignment. So we have... How much of your cravings is because of your strict food rules? Then you have the columns of what are the beliefs of your all or nothing mentality and what are the truths behind that? Your third assignment is when you get that voice in your head, say you have berries at lunchtime and you're keto and it's kind of your carb up and you really want to berries and then you had them and then that voice comes in like, what are you doing? Why? You just broke your plan. You're such a bad person. You're so fat. You're so disgusting. Nobody loves you. That like spiral of craziness. And that that voice is going to be different for everyone. Uh, I call it the drill sergeant. Um, She's like, she's very like, no, we have to stick to plan. We have to do all the things that are perfect. So when that voice comes up for you, whatever that voice is, look at it from compassion what is that voice trying to protect you from? And what could be the compassionate response to that voice? So instead of saying, no, 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 you're wrong. I'm, I'm so perfect and I, I listen to my body, body and you're saying I have a spiral of craziness. <laughs> yeah, if you're saying, no, 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 you're wrong voice that's mean. I, I listen to my body and this is fine and you can just shut up. That response is only going to make that voice stronger. So if you come at it from a compassionate space and you ask yourself, well, what is that harsh voice trying to protect me from? I think I have a belief that if I go off plan, I'm not a good person and I'm not a good nutritionist and I'm not a good leader. And so how can I look at it from a place of compassion? Well, I listened to my body and I really wanted those berries and I thoroughly enjoyed each one of them. And I appreciate that that you want to make sure that I, you know, I'm good at my job and people, people look up to me and, and, and stuff, but I I think I'm pretty good right now. Thank you very much. And it's amazing the difference that that, um, dialogue can have when you look at it from compassion. If you have a hard time connecting to compassion in those moments, think of yourself at 80 years old and connect to your 80 year old self and see what she would say about the situation. Because my 80 year old self is like, girl, you should have ate more cookies is what you should have done. (laughs) So she's like super chill. And you can even imagine what your 80 year old self, like what kind of house she's living in and what kind of activity she does, what her friends are like. And that really helps me connect to compassion. Yes. More cookies. Um, and the next, the last step, So we have three homework assignments and then just something to think about is doing movement that excites you can really, really help, um, the situation of cravings. So this morning I got up a little bit early and went for a walk on my treadmill because I knew it was going to be a crazy day. I was going to feel very ungrounded. And so that can really help me stay grounded in making good choices for myself so I can choose to feel good. 
So those are all the notes that I had. We have a couple of minutes for Q&A if you guys have questions about cravings. Before we get there, hold on one second. I'm just going to flip this around to my keto bundle, uh, healthfulpursuit.com forward slash audio. And if you use the coupon code bundle, that's all in caps, you get 15% off the already like 20% off. And uh, in the Fat Fueled audiobook, which is about six or seven hours of talk time of audio awesomeness, it's a lot to do with uh, busting through those limiting beliefs and body image stuff and using high fat and the beautiful balance between the two. So I'm going to flip this around and we will talk about the Q&A or I will answer your questions on the Q&A. So hit me with your questions. If you ate everything, you know what? I, I very much disagree with that statement. Uh, does anyone else crave licorice? I don't, uh, treat my workouts as only allowance to eat vicious cycle. Yeah. It's really about finding joy and movement. You should listen to episode number five of the no sugar coating podcast. We talk exactly about this chocolate. Yes. Giddy yo-yo has sugar-free chocolate. So good. So hungry in the AM so much carbs at night. Uh, yeah, so you could limit, you could reduce your carbs a little bit, up your fat on those carb ups. Top three fats. Uh, I really like um, refined coconut oil. I find it doesn't bother my throat as much. I've been having some issues with coconut or something. Um, refined coconut oil, I know it's like not the best, but I love it. Um, beef tallow and avocado oil. I'm only about eight days in. I'm so grateful for your work. Just starting back with exercise. Awesome. Just got palm and all of the above. Awesome. Yeah. What I love about eating fats is that it really balances out your blood sugar so you can make more balanced choices and really be inquisitive. And had I not found this eating style, I wouldn't be where I am emotionally with food and my body for sure. Like way, like hundred percent. I know this. Um, uh, I can't unrestrict it. Uh, what feeling are you trying to feel when you are eating the peanut butter? Do you have memories around peanut butter? Uh, I know for me, jujubes. jubes, I don't even really like them, but they remind me of my dad and being happy. So when I crave jujubes, jubes, I do things with my dad that make me happy instead. Feeling so good. Don't want to go back. Awesome. Is around 1,400 calories per day on keto too low? It really depends on where you're at. Uh, I bought a Fitbit just to check my heart rate. And everyone says, like, there's no way you burn 3,000 calories in a day. I don't check these things. But my Fitbit yesterday said I burnt 3,900 calories. And all I did was walk in yoga. So, like, it's so random. I'm not losing weight. Oh, can you post that again? No memories really, no. Before keto, I never really liked peanut butter. I'm wondering if there's, um, I'm wondering if there's a deficiency there. I don't know much about peanut butter and deficiency, but you may want to Google that. I'm doing great on this eating style. Lost 11 pounds last month. Never hungry. Stopped overeating. Awesome. Would eating fats like peanut butter kick you out of ketosis? Uh, no. Peanut butter is not that awesome, but I, no, it shouldn't. I think of mold when I eat peanut butter now. Yeah. Yeah, let me know. Um, could be a deficiency. Is that all the calories in a day or burn more during exercise now? Um, I'm just starting to exercise again and I only use the Fitbit f to track my heart rate. I could care less about calories and how many floors I went. My brother-in-law just needed that. Um, I walk a lot. Any restrictions on nuts? Uh, if you're having inflammation problems or flumminess or hard time breathing, it can be nuts. So just t pay attention to that. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's so awesome. I do the same thing with like coconut butter or um, like hemp seed butter. Yeah. Uh, what monitors do you recommend for keto? Uh, Precision Ultra is the one that I recommend. It's all in the keto beginning for the types of tools, but you don't need to test necessarily if that stresses you out or you have a history of like an eating disorder. Please just don't test. Um, I recommend blood meters as opposed to like breath or urine. The urine ones are really inaccurate. Yeah, all the hearts. 
oh my gosh, we have two more minutes. It causes inflammation big time, so I really don't want to eat it. We'll Google for deficiency. I mean, you could try to switch over to an almond butter, but, but really, if you're able in that space of wanting peanut butter, ask yourself what's going on. Just dig. Just keep digging. Just ask yourself questions. How am I feeling? What's going on? Uh, what emotions am I feeling? What am I searching for? What just happened? Um, what do I feel when I eat peanut butter? Like really kind of dig deep. I retain liquid on my legs if I'm standing or seating. Any advice? Uh, dry brushing, near infrared sauna. You can go to sauna space and use the coupon code healthful for 5% off. Um, any like rebounding just to like get things moving might be helpful. Yeah. All this talk about the berries and the fruits. Oh my goodness, I can't wait till it's summer. Could carving up one meal a week be stalling my weight loss? <laughs> you might not be carving up enough. Remedy for dry eyes. Fats. Lots of water. Lots of sleep. Limited caffeine. Is peanut butter powder any good? I'm so allergic to peanuts I can't even be in the same room. My sister loves it. She loves that stuff. She's obsessed with peanut butter and peanut butter powder. But it's the same peanut thing. It's a legume. It's high in mold. So, I mean, but like if you like it, like have some. It's like when my, my naturopath guy told me not to do my nails because it's toxic. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm going to continue doing my nails because like seriously, you need to live too. So, balance. It's about balance. So have some peanut butter and know that there's probably mold in it and move on. Could carving up be related to binging? Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, I found that when I found carb ups for the first time, I binged a lot because I didn't know what, what to do. Um, but then when I looked at it from a, I'm nourishing my body and I'm nourishing my soul and I'm nourishing my thyroid and my adrenals and all the things. So I'm just going to have a touch of carbs at night. It completely shifted, completely shifted. And that really came when I gave myself permission to eat whatever I wanted and knowing that ketogenic eating made me feel good. So I choose to feel good. And when I choose not to feel good, I use compassion to be okay with that choice and eat the candy or eat the sugar as you can tell, I, I, I really like sugary things. And when we go to movies, I get candy. And I choose to feel not so good when I eat that candy. And then I know I'm not going to feel good. And I use compassion. And you know what? I don't eat that many. I'm just like, oh, that was nice. I had some candy at the movie theater. Had a great time. And then forgot about the bag for four weeks. So it's compassion. Compassion. I'm trying to do keto for 10 days, then go back to carb ups. Just feel like I haven't been in keto. You can totally get into keto doing carb ups every day. Do you get popcorn? Uh, I don't really like movie theater popcorn. Oftentimes I'll just make my own and bring it. I just don't like the taste. Like it tastes like fake butter. So I cook mine on the stove top uh, with a ton of coconut oil. And I really need to find that coconut oil ghee stuff. It tastes like butter, but it's not actually. Uh, should I expect to gain weight when initially starting carb ups then we'll level out yeah definitely um sometimes sometimes you will sometimes you won't uh i will talk i talk about this actually i'm gonna be talking about this tomorrow like my whole ketogenic experience because we're running out of time my whole ketogenic experience is going to be tomorrow we're going to be talking about how i stopped obsess obsessing over calories macros and my weight tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, so same time, same place. We're gonna be talking about exactly that. So stay tuned for that recording tomorrow, and if you can join live, awesome, and if not, that's totally okay. I will be uploading it to YouTube in the next, like in the 24 hours following the video. So we're gonna be talking about um, all of the journey stuff and carb ups and boosting metabolism because I, a year ago, I wasn't burning 3,000 calories a day, and if I ate 3,000 calories a day, I would have gained a ton of weight. So we're going to be talking all about that. Yes, chronicling my journey. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining in, guys. Sorry we talked a little bit longer than I had planned, but whatever. It seemed like everyone was having a good time. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a beautiful day. Bye.